Hello everyone, <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me, and welcome back to Let's Play System Shock 2. Last time we left off, we had cleared out Hydroponics A, and had fed Toxin A into three of the four environmental regulators. We were at the entrance to Hydro D, where, presumably, we will find the final regulator. So let's move through here. First, we've got an audio log. Diego, July 9th, 2114. Regarding our alliance. I believe the plans the many have for me are greater than I even imagined. The change is upon me. That the path is more glorious than we imagined. It does not stop at a mere single mutation. The form I've been promised is more beautiful. More they tell me I will float through the air and strike at the foes of our biomass with my mind. With our mind. My cup runneth over! Oh, and I've also found three EMP grenades, which I haven't queried before. EMP grenades yield more impressive results in terms of damaging or destroying nearby electronics than an EMP rifle. However, they also come with a much lower rate of fire and a stratospherically higher cost per usage. Alright, let's search this guy. He's got an Endure Boost implant, three proximity grenades, and 20 nanites. Let's query the Endure Boost. The Endure Boost trademark implant boosts endurance by one, burning up 1% of its charge every 10 seconds. The first of the boost line of implants manufactured by Krygon Manufactory, the implant gently stimulates both nerve fibers and muscle tissue, and filters fatigue toxins from the blood. How strong do we need to be? Is better actually better? Could Shakespeare write a play with all of the characters mentally, physically, and emotionally jacked up to superheroic levels? Would he even care to? Professor Joaquin Rutu, lecturer, Cape Town University. Here's another spare wrench. Well, let's look at these eggs. Nothing inside that one. Just a grub. Just a grub to destroy with the usual pod organ to pick up. There she is. The midwife dropped nothing. The egg just has a grub and the usual pod organ. This egg has an analid healing gland inside. as well as another grub complete with its pod organ. All right, let's check this room out. We have a desk here with a Psy Hypo, a large beaker, and an audio log, Lesser, July 8th, 2114, regarding Miller. I know what Miller's up to. This morning, this morning I saw Erin Bloom. She was tending to some kind of eggs, and she had been changed in the most horrible, unnatural fashion. I can only think the worst for the rest of my staff. That son of a bitch. That son of a bitch. He won't get away with this. Let's query the large beaker. Uh, it's the same as the small. Just remember to load it up with some worms when we get a chance. But for now, let's check out this replicator. Please make your selection. Still can't hack. Cigarettes for 10, fragmentation grenade clip for 200, disposable maintenance tool for 120, Psy Hypo for 150. Let's head up here. You'll notice here in the back, three cyber modules. Awesome. Nothing inside that crate. A disposable maintenance tool inside that crate. And another audio log up here, Karenchkin, July 8th, 2114, regarding Glory. God, don't do it! Please don't! Glory to the many. <laughs> I am a voice in their quiet. Oh, ah. 
awesome. Let's head through this door. All right, the corpse has a med hypo, a speed booster, 65 nanites, and a suit of powered armor. I'll query it right quick. The Ultratech Class 7 combat armor requires power to run the repulsion fields and support the shielding panels, and requires a strength of 3 to equip. It burns 1% of its charge every 5 seconds. The Class 7 armor is the Trioptimum Military Division's top model. From the solid titanium polymer shielding panels to the 1-inch repulsion field around the wearer, the Class 7 is the premier in protection. While supposedly available for UNN military, most Class 7 models seem to be available principally for Trioptimum security forces. There's lots of good stuff in here, but I need to offload some junk before I can do anything with it. On my way out to do that, I'm gonna fill that beaker from the pile of worms in here. That's because worm clusters recycle for a hell of a lot more than a beaker does. Eight worm clusters, since we used a large beaker. Let's juice up all of our stuff. Make another dump. Back to Sector D. So let's head down here. Let's pick up the power armor. And then, if we look here, we have a dual circuit EMP rifle. It's broken and in shoddy condition, but let's query it. The EMP rifle requires an energy weapon skill of six. The first modification to this weapon increases its energy capacity, while the second increases the speed of a shot. That, that ambient noise is insanely loud. While the second increases the speed of a shot and reduces energy consumption. Additionally, both modifications increase the weapon's damage. When the first atomic weapons were tested in the middle of the 20th century, it was noted that not only did the weapons themselves do catastrophic damage, the electromagnetic pulse they released coincident with the blast effectively neutralized most electronic devices for miles. Once this pulse was isolated, one could cultivate its benefits without the unpleasantness inherent in a nuclear fireball. Dr. Edward Chung, Chief Technological Officer, Trioptimum Research. Now we need to break these windows and hop out into this shaft. We need to manage not to fall into that hot water, which I'll be the first to admit is not as easy as you might think. Now that we're out here, I think, theoretically, there's a way up. Yes, look up here. A disposable maintenance tool, three cyber modules, which are, of course, what we were after, a box of six anti-personnel shotgun shells, and a bottle of bubbly. Oh, wait and the magazine. A high-tech publication by Natural Dynamics, this magazine includes an interactive cover hologram, several nanite-driven animated articles, and a full 3D interview with designers of customized ecologies. All right, let's drop down now. Hop back through the window. 
Let me look at the map right quick. Okay. <clears throat> that just leaves heading into here. Oh, I remember this. Hear that hissing noise? We're about to be introduced to something horrible. I mean, truly horrible. Stuff of nightmares. But not just yet, because I need to offload my junk. Hydro D again. Oh, that hissing. There's a midwife down here, too. The egg is empty. Fighters. You'll notice they have the same animations as the one in Thief. If they hit you, they barely do any damage, but they are highly venomous. This is only an infant. We can wrench it without too much trouble. Analid Arachnid. The corpse has nothing. I don't know how she managed to hit me. But I won't allow it to happen again. There's another arachnid. Nothing on its corpse. That one also has an empty corpse. All right. Well, I just saw a shotgun hybrid spawn in. Let's go left first. Let's search this egg. Is there another? Oh, good gravy. Fully populating the level behind me, and it's really annoying. <laughs> Nothing on that corpse. Good grief. It won't stay clear long enough for me to do anything. Any 
anyway, there's nothing inside the egg. It's a toxic egg. I'm, maybe the corner can protect me, though. Nope. Cryo it is. That egg's empty. It's another toxic egg, so another cryoblast is in order. Oh, well, that's the regulator, so let's head the other way first. 20 nanites and 12 anti-personnel shotgun shells. In a little pit over here, we find three cyber modules. Always a good discovery. And eggs. Nothing inside that one. Toxins mean we'll cryo it down. Over here. Empty egg. Toxins mean cryo. All right, let's head for the regulator now. Life grows within the womb of these walls. Life that has never seen the surface of the earth. Bitch. Life grows within the womb of these walls. I hate it. Life grows within the womb of these walls. Life that has never seen the surface of the earth. It bothers me when they damage me without actually playing an animation, but that's okay, we killed her. So over here, we've got a pistol in terrible condition, which will unload. 12 standard bullets and version 2 repairing software. 6 armor-piercing bullets, an anti-toxin hypo, and 20 nanites. And then finally, the regulator itself. Readings indicate the elevator shaft is clear. Now get up to deck four. I'll be waiting for you. All right. So we got 14 modules for that. My total's up to 42. That last email was Polito, July 12th, 2114, regarding the shaft is clear. So let's just hightail it out of here. got nothing. The hybrid's got nothing. Let's leave our last junk here. The pistol, the ammo, the pod organ. And let's take, let's ride the elevator up to deck four. Operations. All right. We have arrived on deck four. Operations B. And with that, I, of course, am going to call it a video. This has been Let's Play System Shock 2. Next time, we will go forth and finally meet with Dr. Polito on Deck 4. Until then, thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.